Hi there, it's Bob from Insidium, Top Tip Tuesday time. In today's video, I'm going to show you how we can take X particles and Nexus and how we can link those to create this Cinema 4D rigid bodied simulation. The beauty of this is that we can use those rigid bodies, but we can use some of the Nexus tools like Nexus Color, for example, to animate the objects. So let's get started. In our scene then we have our particle nexus constraints collisions scene set up from a previous top tip. We're going to take this and actually generate a rigid bodied simulation instead which has much more accurate collisions. So what we're going to do is we don't need any of our nexus physics. The internal Cinema 4D simulation physics is going to do that. So I'm going to switch off the gravity and the nexus constraints that was working out those particle collisions. We're going to go to our cube, which has an XP collider tag on, trapping the particles inside, and we're going to disable those collisions. And now what we're going to do is we're going to generate some geometry, first of all from the emitter main particles, the large ones. So we're going to go to the generators folder in our XP system. We're going to bring in an XP generator, and this says which emitter do you want to use to generate these particles. So let's drag in emitter main. And I'm just going to rename that in the basic tab. Let's rename that generator main just to say organized. OK, now what this is going to do, it's going to generate some geometry from every particle that gets emitted. And you have to make the object you want to generate a child of the generator. So look, I've got a skull main bit of geometry up here. Let's drag that as a child of this generator. Going to hit play. And now look, we've got our skulls. And this is generated geometry. Now there's no physics going on here. There's no gravity. This is just there's speed from the emitter and the particles are moving down. So now what we want to do is as soon as these are born, we want them to become a dynamic, rigid bodied bit of geo. So to do that, we highlight the generator, go to tags, simulation tags and add a rigid body tag. And then we want the cube to be a collision object. So we need to go to the tags, simulation tags, and we'll bring in this uh, general collider for the simulation tools in Cinema 4D. In that collider, let's make the collider side back so it traps them inside. So now we have got our rigid bodied particles. Now, they are no longer adhering to that particle speed that, that they were given in the emitter. They're just born. As soon as they're born, they become a rigid body and the internal Cinema 4D gravity is working out how they're falling. They're being trapped within our cube because of the simulation tag. And these are true rigid bodies now. And they are interacting with each other with these realistic collisions. OK, that's cool. So we've got those. So we've also got another emitter. And this is emitting our light particles. Remember the ones in the skull scene was used to illuminate the darker ones. And these emit on frame, I think, 150. Let's have a look. Yeah, look, so there's emitting some static particles. We want these to generate skulls as well. So we're going to go to generators, bring in another generator, and this time we'll drag in our emitters lights. Let's just call that one generator lights. All right. And we need to, it needs a, a rigid body tag as well. So let's copy by holding control dragging that tag up there we need to put another skull object as a child so it knows what to generate and we've got a skull lights here look let's bring that there so now if we hit play we're going to get that same bit of rigid bodied simulation on frame 150 there may be a slight pause in playback as it calculates the new skulls that have been introduced but they will interact with our blue ones yeah here we go now, because these are tiny, they're not actually um, able to push around the existing skulls very much. And we got some nice motion in the original particle sim. So the way we can do that is to increase the density of these small skulls. So let's go to the generator lights, uh, rigid body tag, go to the mass tab, and let's put the density up to say 15. Now, when we hit play, 
these have got a greater density so they will uh, move these blue ones around and kind of fall through to generate some interesting uh, movement within these collisions so here we go yes yeah, so you can see look it's knocking them up and then they're falling down let's do one more and that's going to force these to move around and we're getting these interesting collisions okay so that's looking cool so we're able to take uh, nexus and x particles generate geometry and then that geometry can become a rigid body using the cinema 4d tools but here's the cool thing we can use and animate the color of these objects using the nexus color modifier which is really powerful so let me just demonstrate you can see that these skulls have taken on the particle color so let's animate that we're going to go to i'm going to switch off my um generator lights and emitter lights for now and let's just work with these skulls and we're going to go to nexus and we're going to bring in a nexus color modifier and on here i'm going to add a layer we're going to do a gradient by parameter layer gradient by parameter and i want to give each particle a random color from a gradient so we do that by first loading up the gradient this is the default i'm going to load preset and bring in this one and i'm going to map that to a random so it means that each particle is going to get a random color from that gradient yes that's working and it's passed through into the geometry so now let's go to our material manager going to drag on this skull main material onto our generator main and we're going to go to redshift render view move that up there we'll start rendering now we're not going to see this color straight away let's just switch on the lighting in our scene we're not seeing the color and that's because we need to tell the material to access that color that we got from the particles so let's open up our skull main material now this has got a max on noise uh, driving both the roughness and the bump of our material but the color if we go to this standard node and just come down it's not being given the color by the base it's being given the color by the subsurface scattering which we've got on a weight of one with this kind of muddy color so what we want to do is feed our object color into here so let's hold control click on this button that then creates an input for this parameter and now we need to get that object color so let's double click we're going to type in user we want a color user data now in the past if we come here we go to our attribute name and we can find the various ones from the presets in the past we've done a lot of getting the particle color haven't we but not for this we need to get the object color so let's go to objects object color hit solo and yes look it's able to get that object color brilliant so then if we feed that into our subsurface color yes now we're getting um that object color into our redshift material that's cool but um, we can do more than that because let's just switch off that real-time preview for a minute um, we're able to animate color really easily using nexus color we can do that with fields and we can do it with layers so let's do a layer i'm going to add another gradient by parameter put this one at the top and this one we're just going to turn it into a black and white gradient so let's just make that black and white and we're going to map it to the age of the particle so when they're born they're black and they gradually get lighter as they get older let's just clamp that down a little bit okay so now if we hit play because that one's on top it just overrides it and they go from black to white okay so that's obvious but then if we put this top one on multiply blend mode they're going to be born black and then gradually reveal all of those random colors yeah look it's coming through fantastic and if we go to our redshift render view hit render yes that is respected when the particles are born they are have a subsurface with a very black dark color and as they get older and older 
they start to reveal this nice kind of random colorization that we've got from that other gradient by parameter. So that's just one example of how we can animate color, which then gets fed into the geometry, which we can then access at Redshift. And the advantage of this method is obviously we've got these really cool and fast to simulate true rigid bodied collisions.